After a bumpy start to the season, Luka Doncic has been on an absolute tear lately, averaging 36 points a game in February and leading Dallas to a 17-6 record since the new year. So how have the Mavs been able to do this? And maybe more importantly, just how far can the Mavs go playing this brand of Luka Ball? Even with Jason Kidd replacing Rick Carlisle, Dallas still relies on a heavy dose of spread pick and roll for Luka, with three shooters behind the arc and a ball screen for Doncic to work with. He's already mastered these pick and roll reads, hitting the roller or the popper when two defenders are on him. This is against drop coverage, which allows defenders to stay close to the shooters at the three-point line, so Luka just recycles the screen, creates a little two-on-one against the big man, and then freezes him with a floater. Nope, that's a lob. Against more team-oriented coverages that bring defenders over to help on the roller, Luka falls back on skip passes to those outside shooters. And if you try something like a quick show and recover without fully committing extra defenders, he can thread the needle and his size, patience, and sheer audacity make passes like that an option for him. He's willing to use all of that thick six foot seven frame at times, sealing off his defender and weaving around a screen a second time in the paint. And so if you switch his pick and roll with a smaller player, he's going to immediately play bully ball, back you down, and if there's no double team, that'll lead to a decent look too. The last thing you probably wanna do against his pick and roll is switch a traditional big man out and leave him on an island. The best case scenario is that Luka settles for too many threes and his shot isn't falling, but that's playing with fire since he can take these centers off the dribble with his quickness advantage, and if defenses decide to slide over and help on those drives, it's easy playmaking for Doncic. In the last month, Luka has picked apart the Clippers' switching strategy, scoring 96 points in two games against them, and then New Orleans tried it for a while in part of a 49-point outing. So Luka's spread pick and roll is a powerful foundation for any half-court offense, especially one short on great offensive talent. And the Mavs build off that with multiple screeners. We recently discussed their staggered screens, paired with an exit screen that harnesses Luka's pick and roll talent. And the Mavs also run a ton of Spain pick and roll, where a third player joins the pick and roll dance, and the defense is basically switching the ball screen here. And even though there's an extra defender standing in the heart of the paint, he's worried about his man slipping out for three, and in all that confusion, Luka just sees an easy lob. The next time down, it's the same Spain pick and roll, and the Pacers try hedging out to Luka, and he uses his size to punish the recovery with a gorgeous feed over the top. This is where his great feel amplifies all these pick and roll actions. This is also Spain, but he rejects the screen with a cross, and then the help is just too small to bother him at the rim. Dallas also brings him into these actions off a little movement, Here's a little handoff that transposes into a spread pick and roll, three shooters around the arc and the screener, and that is some unbelievable stride control and balance. They like to bring him off down screens from the baseline, where again, he has a shooter or roll man, and once the roller clears this defender, that is all she wrote. Here's another version of the same action where Luca's screener clears out to the opposite corner and so the handoff transposes into an empty side pick and roll and Doncic makes that pass in his sleep. The entire point of these handoffs from the baseline is to leave Luca's defender a step behind the play as he catches the ball, which creates that downhill two on one against a big man. So if a defender like Matisse Thibel goes under a screen to take that away, Luka can flow into a three, and if he makes that consistently, he's basically impossible to defend. Fortunately for the league, he's been pretty hit or miss from downtown, stuck on his career average of 33% this season, and after some improvement on his long twos, those have cratered as well in 2022, which means his shot selection on some of these jumpers is a bit questionable. Until he levels up that three-point shooting, defenses can at least live with him launching a ton of step-back threes. 
Still without great shooting, Dallas has been cooking since December 1st with Luka on the floor. The Mavs have nearly a 117 offensive rating in that time span, which would land in the 89th percentile for the season, and they are outscoring opponents by 12 points per 100 possessions, which would rank second in the league, and that's an 11-point improvement from the 1,000 minutes they've played without Doncic in that time span. So Luka Ball has been working, but is there enough around him to take down the best healthy teams in the West when the playoffs roll around? One issue with the Dallas supporting cast has been a lack of high-end shooting around Doncic's mega creation. Tim Hardaway Jr. was around 40% on moderately high volume over the last two years, but he's come way back down to 34%, slightly below his career average. And Dallas's other three volume shooters, Reggie Bullock, Maxi Kleba, and Dorian Finney-Smith are all around 36 or 37%. Kristaps Porzingis was shooting a painful 28% on his threes before he was traded away, and without much of a post game or any ball handling, he didn't seem to quite fit this Dallas system. Newly acquired Davis Bertans is a career 40% three-point shooter, so in lineups where he can stay on the floor defensively, he offers an elite three-point weapon for the Mavs. The most notable offensive player next to Luka is Jalen Brunson, who gives Dallas a double point guard look next to Doncic. Brunson isn't nearly the passer that Luka is out of these spread pick and roll options, but he can create his own offense as well as offense for others, making him a nice secondary option. And that allows the Mavs to run really similar sets. Here's that exit screen they love with Brunson feathering in the perfect lob. Like Luka, He'll use his body as a shield out of screen and roll, and he can't throw lobs quite as well, but he has a nice touch in the short mid-range. He also has a great feel for going before the screen arrives, stopping and starting here, then faking handoff action before knifing in for a layup. This is another spread pick and roll, and he fakes like he's going to go away from the screen, only that in and out dribble springs him before the pick even arrives, and then that short range magic finishes the job. This means that whenever Dallas's first offensive option fizzles out, they can always reset into an efficient pick and roll with either Luka or Brunson as a backstop for the offense. And Jalen has some value next to Luka too, they can run the same actions, and he's 43% on catch-and-shoot threes over the last three seasons. They can also have Brunson take the wheel of the offense for Luka. He can dribble into a handoff here for Doncic or cut back and run the pick-and-roll himself to get downhill into the paint. Sometimes the Mavs end up in isolation late in the clock, and Brunson's good enough that Luka swings it to him with five seconds left, and Doncic probably finds a lob there somehow, but Jalen's sweet short game is a decent alternative. Brunson is good enough as a passer to drop some of these dimes. The shot clock is at two when he finds this cutting layup, and on this play, once Joel Embiid decides to hopscotch out of the way, Jalen does his best Luka impression with the look away lob. Yes. When the Mavs are at their best, you end up with possessions like this a handoff to get into spread pick and roll for Doncic. He swings to Brunson in the corner, who himself attacks only to hit a cutter, and that extra pass is something the Mavs role players make quite often. Dallas doesn't always settle for that first three off these pick and rolls, and extra passes can lead to better shots. There's that lack of three-point shooting, and many of their best offensive trips feature multiple passes to find better looks. And with the defense in rotation, it's easier to attack closeouts like this. Miami tried to trap Doncic recently to slow down his white-hot scoring, and they have the defensive personnel to scramble and recover, but great ball movement always outpaces these rotations. They send two defenders to Luka here off the screen. He's big enough to patiently pass out of it, and changing sides like that taxes a defense, which leads to three extra passes and all five players touching it on a gorgeous offensive trip. So, even though they lack high-end firepower, the supporting cast around Luka can knock down threes at a decent rate, 
and make critical extra passes to capitalize on those advantages that he creates out of all those ball screen actions. The other big part of this equation is the defensive side of the ball, where Dallas has the league's fourth best defensive rating since December 1st, holding opponents five points per 100 below league average in those 40 games. Jason Kidd has said he learned a few tricks from Frank Vogel in Los Angeles, and I think it has shown the Mavs are one of many teams who will overload the strong side against scores like this while the three defenders zone up the weak side, and they will shrink the floor and place extra bodies in the paint. Luka isn't out on the edge of the lane or off in the corner, and this is similar to what we saw with Golden State earlier this year, where sinking in or lingering in the paint can be prioritized over helping on the perimeter. This requires communication and everyone operating on the same page. The low defender is early to help in the lane. These players then X out, which is a coordinated switch to close out, and then everyone recovers behind the play, so it ends up going nowhere. On this one, Dwight Powell tells Finney Smith to push the pick and roll baseline, so Kleba slides into the paint early, which takes away Ja Morant's explosive left hand, and listen to Finney Smith tell him to switch. Luca recognizes the weak side is vulnerable with two players on Morant, so he's ready to help on the pass, which allows everyone to recover, and it's a beautiful defensive possession. Finney Smith can be very vocal behind the play, and the second Jalen Brunson is switched onto a center, he wants to swap places with him. Brunson misses it, but DFS is such a versatile defender that he can hang with Ja in isolation, knowing that a teammate is overloading behind him. And once again, the clock winds down, and the Mavs end up with a great defensive stand. Dallas will occasionally go zone, using it here against the ginormous Joel Embiid, and you can see Finney Smith communicating, then closing out hard to a shooter, but even in a zone there's help behind. Luka slides to take the baseline, and everyone moves in unison, and at the end of the possession, it's Finney Smith who makes a great steal on the entry. A few minutes later, Philly tried to isolate DFS down there, and he just uses guile and athleticism to swim around and bead for the steal. But for my money, the star of this defense is the unheralded Maxi Kleba, who is strong enough as a man defender to just completely stamp Jimmy Butler on this clutch possession in Miami, using his hands, sliding his feet well, and then check out how strong he is to take that big shoulder at the end of the play and stay in and contest. At 6'10", his strength makes him a really solid post defender, and yet, somehow, the Mavs also use him on point guards at time, covering Chris Paul for stretches of this Suns game, and then flying in to help on this drive, which prevents an easy putback and saves the play. Kleba has had some eye-popping help plays this season, coming out of nowhere to erase this Nikola Jokic layup, and this is an amazing read, knowing Jokic will score if he catches it that deep. Wow, someone get this man some PR. Maxi doesn't have huge block numbers, but I think that's because he's on the perimeter so much and just doing whatever the scheme requires. He helps down off a guard for this rim block, and not only does he have great physical tools and effort on this end, but he's fairly aware as a help defender, which makes a great centerpiece next to Finney Smith and company for Jason Kidd's defense. Even Luka has been more engaged on this end, using his body and size to his advantage to hang with someone like John Morant out here. He's essentially a big forward in today's game, which means he can guard the post decently well, and because of all that size, his early rotations into the paint can offer more impact than if he were something like a 6'2 guard. He's still not the fleetest of foot guarding the perimeter, which means slashers can get around him if he's not careful, but he can use his mind and anticipation to add value on that end. And that can lead to spectacular sequences like this one, where Doncic scores at the end of the half, and then is reading the passer's eyes on the inbounds so he can break as the pass is being thrown, and that is what the kids call Luka Magic. I still think this team is missing another major piece, but as currently constructed, they look like a top 10 offensive and defensive team 
in many ways built for the half-court matchup specific grind of the playoffs. Luka Ball can certainly wear opponents down, and if the Mavs get hot from downtown, they could be a tough out in the playoffs thanks to their solid role players, strong defense, and of course, their MVP level star, Luka Doncic. To support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball where there's additional content, a stats leaderboard that updates daily, a community, and more. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments, and otherwise I hope that wherever and whenever you are watching from, that you are having a great day.